Hey, welcome back everyone to the channel. It's Friday and that means that last night we wrapped up an episode of Sketch Zone podcast. If you haven't checked that out yet, I'm going to leave a link to the channel. I always forget which side, that side. Go ahead and check that out. That's me and my friends. We have an art related podcast where we talk to all kinds of creative professionals in the creative industry people that are like uh, concept designers, illustrators, filmmakers, directors, all that stuff. So uh, take a look up there. We just finished recording episode 197. And now that we're done with the last night's episode, I'm doing all of the social media stuff. And I decided that this is a really good time to give you guys a tour of my Photoshop file where we're gonna talk about art boards and smart objects. Before we get into it, roll the intro. Okay, welcome back. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and move to the computer so we can take a look at the Photoshop file. So if we take a look at the Photoshop file, on one side we have an artboard that's labeled YouTube and on the other side we have one that's called Instagram. I use the Instagram images not just for Instagram but also for SoundCloud and even for our website sketch.zone. So again, go there and check it out. We have 197 shows already done. A lot of work has gone into that. You guys should go enjoy that. To create a new artboard, what we're going to do is go up to Layer, New, Artboard. And we get a dialog box. I'm going to name it Test Artboard. And you can set the size and everything. 600 by 600 is fine. We're just going to go with it. There we go. And if you look over here on the Layers panel, we have all of our artboards separated in a folder structure. So whatever I have in the test, and I completely misspelled the artboard, so I'm gonna double click and actually spell it correctly. So now if I ever need to grab, let's say I'm gonna grab this drawing, I can click Alt, click and drag, and it'll show up in that artboard. And you see over here, that image showed up on that artboard. All of that is going to make sense in a little bit. And to delete that artboard, all I'm going to do is grab that folder and just drag it to the trash can down at the bottom of the layers panel. Now let's talk about smart objects. Think about a smart object almost like a Photoshop file within a Photoshop file. Some of the benefits of working with smart objects are that you can take that high resolution smart object, drop it into a low resolution file, and it'll Photoshop is going to give you the best resolution available for that file. But if you needed to make changes to the higher resolution file, you would just double click on that smart object and it would open up in a completely different window. You can do your adjustments, save it, and it'll automatically update the smart object layer that's in your current Photoshop. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys real quick how to set up a smart object. So I grab the text tool. I'm going to type Carlos was here. Now we're going to make that a little bit bigger so we can see what we're dealing with. Okay, now that we have that set up, what I'm going to do is come over to the layers panel. All we need to do is come over to this part of the layer and then do a right click and then we need to find convert to smart object. Okay, so now take a look at this little icon right here. That lets us know that this is set up as a smart object and now we have all the benefits of a smart object. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that, drag that down to that little plus symbol at the bottom of the panel, and it made a direct copy. And now I'm able to drag that over to the Instagram artboard. And now that we have the smart object set up, I'm gonna double click and it opens up in a different window. So I'm gonna grab the crop tool, shortcut is C, or if you wanna find it here, you can go to the bottom of the tools palette. 
I'm gonna make that a little bigger just to make sure whatever text we end up playing with, I wanna make sure that I have enough real estate to have it. So let's go ahead and do this quick, quick correction here. Okay, Carlos was here. Now let's go up here. We're gonna change the font to something a little more fun. Okay, let's go with, uh, how about this? Yeah, Gotham Ultra. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna close this window. You don't necessarily have to close the window. I keep closing it just because of habit, but you can leave it open. So if I come here and I change the color, now I'm gonna hit save. You see how quick everything gets updated? It's incredibly useful. And just to let you know, it doesn't only have to be text. I can create a new layer. I can grab a shape. You can drop in drawings, whatever. As long as it fits within the boundaries of this document, it will show up just fine. Okay, so let's drop that in here. I'm gonna hit save, move this out of the way. And look at that, how fast it gets updated. So this smart object here is being referenced. So everything that happens here is going to be reflected on everything else that we're working with. As long as you remember to save, uh, everything, will be, everything will be updated. I'm just gonna get a little creative here. And oops, I meant to get out of that. So let's go ahead and type here, okay. And then we're gonna get out of that text field by hitting escape. I'm gonna hit save and just like that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. I'm just gonna drag that to the trash can at the bottom of the layers panel. I just wanted to show you guys how to set up a smart object. But let me show you one of the other benefits. Remember that the changes that you make to the smart object gets updated automatically to everywhere else you're using it. So check this out. See here where I have a episode number 197. I'm gonna command click on that and I have it set up to where it's gonna automatically go to that layer. So if I double click on episode number and I hit T for text, I'm gonna highlight the seven and turn that to an eight. So now I'm gonna save it and then close that. And now you see that both of these 198 numbers have been updated. I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the name as well. So I'm gonna double click on name. I have special, let's just say Carlos. Even better, let's say please. Last name. hit save we're gonna flip back and you see it says please subscribe so that looks a little bit weird I'm going to turn on the background color I have a layer set up so I can actually see what's happening with the white text I'm gonna click on please and just move that better into place so it doesn't compete or it doesn't smash into the subscribe part I'm gonna turn that color layer back off hit save, close that file, and you see that it's automatically updated. Same thing with the show title. Let's just go down to title here. I'm going to welcome to coconut justice. I'm gonna hit save. Close that, and there we go. Please subscribe, welcome to Coconut Justice. And I have this one more layer right here. This is the URL to all of the episodes. So if I zoom out, I'm gonna double click on there, zoom in, hit T for text, turn that into an eight. I'm gonna save, 
close that and everything yet again is updated. If you notice, I don't have a smart object for the image because a lot of times I have to adjust the image or flip it as you see here. I just need to find the right angle because of the design. I need to just leave the images completely different. The YouTube image is more of a video size, whereas the Instagram image is more of a square. And so I just leave the image of the special guest. Just, I, I just take care of that individually. Now that I have all the information updated on these images, what I'm going to do is create two separate graphics, one obviously for YouTube and one for everything else. What I'm gonna do is go up to File, Export, Artboards to Files. When we do that, we get this dialog box, and here I can browse and make sure that it's gonna go into my Sketch Zone social media posts, click Open. I'm gonna type in here episode 198, and then down here we have include overlapping areas or artboard content only. Okay, so now we have this include background in export. For me, I have a bunch of different layers that are filling the entire artboard, so it doesn't really matter. I just leave that as is. And then here we can designate what file type we want. We can do either bitmap, JPEG, PSD, PDF, Targa, TIFF, PNG8, PNG24. I do JPEG. One thing to remember is YouTube gives you a certain file size limit when you're creating your thumbnails. So I always do JPEG. And if you click on export options, here you can set the quality and all that other good stuff. I don't, I just leave it how it is. It, it, uh, it just works. And if I hit run, it's gonna go through, do, it, do its magic. I'm gonna click okay. So let's run over to the, here we go. And here are all of the images that I've already created for all the previous shows. Here's the Instagram page. Let's go ahead and open that up. That opened up over there. So we're gonna drag that over here and then open up the YouTube. And there's a YouTube image. Yeah, so this is something that I haven't seen a lot of videos on actually leveraging smart objects and art boards to expedite all of the all of the tedious tasks that go with making a podcast or, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever you guys have going on. Hopefully this is going to save you a little bit of time. Time is money and I just saved at least 27 cents. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you know anyone that might be able to learn something from this video, go ahead and share it with them. And of course, if you haven't yet, please subscribe. It helps tremendously. That's it for me. I hope you guys had fun. I'll see you guys in the next video.